Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black demon deck as voted on by my supporters featuring Haunting Voyage. The 6 mana mythic rare sorcery that lets us choose a creature type and return up to 2 creature cards of that type from our graveyard to the battlefield. But we can also foretell it by paying the 2 mana beforehand and then 7 mana afterwards, in which case we can return all creature cards of the chosen type from our graveyard to the battlefield instead. And all the creatures in this deck are demons, so starting out at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Dream Devourer, a 2 mana 03 saying each non land card in our hand without foretell has the ability to foretell, and its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2, and whenever we foretell a card the Dream Devourer gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, so we can potentially ramp out some of our more expensive cards like our Burning Rune Demon or Giruda by foretelling them on turn 3 and then casting them on turn 4. Then we also have a one-off copy of Scourge of the Skyclaves, mostly as a creature we can potentially search up with our Burning Rune Demon, but it's also an evenly costed demon that we can potentially hit with Giruda. Its power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players, and can also cast it with Kicker for 5 additional mana, in which case when it's kicked each player loses half of their life around it up, which will make the Scourge into a very large threat. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Varagoth Blood Sky Sire, the 2-3 with Death Touch that can boast for one on a black, in which case we can search our library for any card and put it on top of our deck, so it can potentially help us find our Haunting Voyage. Now it is an oddly costed demon, so we won't be able to hit it with Giruda, but it still fills out our curve nicely. Then at 4 mana we've got the full play set of Nightmare Shepherd, a 4-4 enchantment creature demon with flying, saying whenever another non-token creature we control dies we may exile it, and if we do create a token that's a copy of that creature except it's a 1-1 and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So not the best synergy with Haunting Voyage in the sense that we will exile the creatures instead of having them go to the graveyard, but great synergy with our Death Touching Varagoth, which is still quite relevant, even as a 1 1, and also great with our 6 mana demons that have powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities that will trigger once again. And at 6 mana, we've got the full playset of Burning Rune Demon, a 6 6 Demon Berserker with flying. When it enters the battlefield, we may search our library for exactly two cards not named a Burning Rune Demon that have different names. And if we do reveal those cards, an opponent chooses one of them to put into our graveyard, and the other one goes into our hands. And then we've got two copies of Giruda, Doom of Depths, a 6-6, six, six, that when it enters the battlefield each player mills four cards, and then we put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under our control. So if we get lucky we can potentially mill a Burning Rune Demon and put it straight onto the battlefield. And then by milling more cards we also potentially enable the Haunting Voyage to get back more demons, and we're also filling the graveyard to enable our Pestilent Cauldron, and we're only planning to cast the left hand side of the card, a 3 mana artifact that can tap and discard a card to create a 1 1 pest token, so that can function as a discard outlet to potentially enable our Haunting Voyage to get back more demons from the graveyard. And then the 1 1 tokens still get pumped by Heraldic Banner, which will enter a battlefield naming black, giving our black creatures plus 1 plus 0, and then taps for black mana as well, so it can help us ramp while pumping the team. Then the second ability, we can pay 1 mana, tap the cauldron, each opponent mills cards equal to the amount of life we gained this turn, not gonna come up very often, but the last ability, for 4 mana we can tap cauldron and exile 4 target cards from a single graveyard to draw a card. So that's great in combination with Giruda, which will fill the graveyards nicely to enable Cauldron to draw more cards. And then the other big card draw engine in the deck is Castle Lochthwain, which can also draw us additional cards. And then going over the rest of the deck, we do have a few one-offs that we can potentially search up with our Burning Rune Demon, giving us more options. One copy of Extinction Event to wipe the board, mostly going to be effective if we can name Odd, since most of our creatures are evenly costed. We've got a one-off Hangar Mauling that we can play as a tap land or a 4-mana removal spell, alongside 4 copies of Blood Chief's Thirst and 4 copies of Heartless Act. And then we've already mentioned our Scourge of the Skyclaves, 4 copies of Heraldic Banner, and yeah, that's pretty much the entire deck, 2 copies of Crawling Barons in the mana base as an additional mana sink, and then 18 swamps and 4 castles. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a acceptable hand. Got the 2-3-4 curve, Voyage for the late game. Bluff Princess syndicates an aggressive white deck.
keep a partless act. All right. So we'll let him learn and then kill the princess before he picks up a counter. Gets probation. Playing non-basic lands first could be relevant if our opponent has the Archon that makes non-basic center battlefield tapped. So Mono White's counter deck. For now, thankfully Shepard and then keep Varagoth on defense. So we can still potentially block the Princess. All right, played Historian for double strike. So do we want to trade here is a question. It's not a great trade. But getting more stuff in the graveyard sets up our voyage. Seems reasonable. Alternatively, I can just block the pupil with Varogoth since we have a backup. Alright, so can attack and boast. And then what do we look for? Blood Chief's Thirst, maybe. And play Dream Devourer. So Kick Thirst can answer Historian. Hagra Mauling also would have done it. Maybe would have given us a bit more flexibility since we can always play it as a land as well. Second Regimen. Finds Mascot Exhibition, which they're luckily pretty far from casting. So I can take 12 or Chum Block. I'll Chum Block. Another Historian. Yeah, that's gonna hurt next turn. Second attack, boast, get another Thirst. Or I can play Nightmare Shepherd and keep Faragoth on defense. They can use the Probation to prevent it from blocking. But that's maybe still okay. Because we'll get two Chum Blockers out of the deal. Another Historian. Okay, Pestle and Cauldron also keeps me alive for a while. And I can start discarding my Burning Rune Demons to then reanimate. And do I attack with Shepard? It's a little risky, but we can make an extra Chum blocker now with cauldron, so I'll start attacking. Spellbinder will look at my hand. So most likely Exile's Voyage, but we'll see. So that's gonna mess with our game plan quite a bit. And Spellbinder an extra threat that can Deal a lot of damage in the air. So, discard one demon. Guess we'll hang on to Varagoth. So, might have to get Extinction Events on Even, which can also deal with the Mascot Exhibition. So just Varogoth attacking. 
and then I can boast. Could also draw with Cauldron, but I won't have the mana to do anything else, really. Put on blocks, that's good. Now they could suspect that we search Extinction Event and then name it with Probation. My hope is that they tap out for a Mascot Exhibition. And then I'll play Vargoth. It's going to be a Princess instead. Probation on Vergoth, that's fine. And then I'm happy chumping with Shepard since that's going to get exiled by the extinction event anyway. So I can take 8 or I can discard Demon to chump. Probably keep the Demon around so we have a follow up. And then just chump here. No, they will still have that mascot exhibition. Aspirants can grow the princess, but Vergoth, perfect blocker here, even if the princess gets very large. Land would be nice. And then I want to get an extra Haunting Voyage and Giruda. So I suspect we'll get Giruda here. No, gives us the Haunting Voyage. Okay. So next turn I can cast that, getting back Giruda plus something else. And I can use Cauldron to chum the Princess if needed. Demon. Giruda plus, I guess, Burning Rune Demon. And then look for some removal. Thirsts plus Hagar Mauling since Heartless Act is pretty awkward. Shiruda hits another Burning Rune Demon. And this time, probably go for another Thirsts. Plus what's left? I guess another Haunting Voyage. Alright, and then plan is probably to discard something to uh, make a 1-1 one -one with Cauldron so we can block the Princess and then we should be able to attack for lethal in the air. Well, this was a very close game. Definitely saw the value of having a couple one-offs in the deck to search up with our Burning Runes and our Varagoth as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hand. 
Devourer into either a turn 3 Varogoth or we can foretell Shepherd. And then Varogoth could go looking for one of our 6 mana demons or a haunting voyage. Alright, now I just need to hit my land drops. Probably gonna exile the demon so we can maybe play it on turn 4. Tom could finish off the Dream Devourer. Sure. Keep Varagoth on defense. Could see Giant Killer kill Shepherd in response. But we're fine trading resources with the eventual game plan being casting a Haunting Voyage. Innkeeper has to die. Would love to hit our land drops. Extinction event on odds. Also looking good. Followed our retreat to pump the team. Beast can no longer attack at least. So we'll get Haunting Voyage Extinction Events. We get the extinction events. The beast can now attack again. Now it can no longer attack. So maybe a slight missequencing there. I have to keep our demon on defense. Burning Rune for Haunting Voyage and Bloodsheaf's Thirsts. Still have a land to play Thirst on Clarion Spirit. So we're not necessarily dead to a land now. And gotta stay back. Another retreat. Alright, that's scary. Do we have any voyages left? We 
we do. And get another thirst. Alright, so now that we have the thirst, we can afford to attack. Probably killing... doesn't matter too much, Sentinel. that are probably going to make some tokens here. But yeah, they look dead on board to me. As we can attack with a team, they can jump one demon, take 14. Heartless Act would have been a nice top deck as well in case they had an extra flying blocker. So yeah, definitely a close game. That extinction events to the rescue. And followed a retreat, powerful card, but putting plus one counters on the one ones made it so the Lost Rock Beast could not attack. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a very slow hand, but uh, got some interaction, powerful top end with double demon and castle. So I'll try it. If we draw banner, or if we draw a Dream Devourer to foretell the Burning Rune Demons will be in good shape. For now, hang on to Hagra Mauling, although we might play it as a land. Okay, turn to Tomb. Yeah, we'll foretell the Voyage. Got a feeling this game might go pretty long. Opponent also foretells. Don't really want to draw another demon. So my Crawling Barons doesn't attack favorably into Faceless Haven yet, but we can level it up at least. So expecting a counter spell. can try again next turn and eventually Haunting Voyage can get them all back. Field of Ruin can answer Crawling Barons or Castle. Solemn Form or Ramp. So we might be up against an Ugin deck or maybe ramping into Coma, who knows. That resolves. And we'll search for Giruda. And what else? Maybe a Nightmare Shepherd. Or I could get a Scourge of the Skyclaves, although my life total is not very low at the moment. Yeah, let's go with the uh, Shepherd. Can maybe play it alongside using Heartless Act or activating Castle. Chiruda down the graveyard where we can maybe reanimate it later. Could have also gone for Blood Chief's Thirst if we're expecting Ugin to show up. Forsaken Monument keeps up. Three mana for a counter. 
So I could play another demon, just run it into a counter spell so we clear a path for Haunting Voyage. That seems reasonable. And then we still keep up Heartless Acts. Not sure if I want to attack with my demon. Or if I keep it on defense. I guess I'll attack. Haven turns into a creature, that one I don't mind taking out. Can still be tapped for mana to maybe use Field of Ruin. Alright, it gets negated instead. So we take 10. And another Simulacrum. So if I were to play Shepherd, I can still activate Barons. Probably got to keep my Demon on defense now. And then I would be happy to make some trades to eventually cast a Haunting Voyage. And Wandering Archaic. Okay. Opponent attacks. Yeah, we'll trade. And then between activating barons or castle, probably go for castle. Alright, there's Ugin. Can finish off my demon. So this is gonna be a good haunting voyage, only problem is opponent can just minus Ugin next turn to exile everything I bring back. Maybe should have drawn with Castle in the hopes of finding a Blood Chief's Thirst. Yeah, going for a haunting voyage right now doesn't accomplish anything. Can kill the Archaic and then attack Ugin with Barons. It's not enough to kill it on the spot. But it is something. It makes it more difficult for them to minus and wipe my entire board. So we'll try this approach. We're at seven. If they feel they've ruined my barons, I can at least activate my castle end of turn. Although that does put me at a life total where two Ugin activations kill me. Might still be worth it. I guess uh, Faceless Haven's gonna make it so we're just dead to Ugin next turn. And I wouldn't be able to use castle. So, yeah, I don't think we have any outs since I need to top deck a Blood Chief's Thirst for Ugin, but then I wouldn't be able to beat the Crawling Barons. Yeah, that's too bad. Can play Varagoth. Haunting Voyage on Demon. And it's a lot of triggers. There's all the thirsts. But uh yeah, I wouldn't be able to survive the Ugin activation. So yeah, this would have been pretty cool, but sadly Ugin's gonna Ugin. Hit another burning rune demon for good measure. So you know. An impressive turn.
All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn two, Dream Devourer. Turn three, we can either foretell or play Cauldron. Opponent fetches the planes. Blue white, opponent with a charming prince, so it could be some sort of flicker deck with Thassa. Alright, for now. Can attack. I think I'm gonna foretell as opposed to playing cauldron. As so we don't really need access to the cauldron yet. Spellbinder can exile Shepherd, but we can play another one. So can attack. And then we'll foretell the cauldron probably. And play Shepherd. Could have played Shepherd first in case they did trade, so we at least get the Devourer back. I'll rally the ranks on human. Alright. Pumps Charming Prince, gets in for four. Which is gonna grow the Scourge of the Skyclaves as well. Alright, so we have a few options. Kicked Thirst Killing Spellbinder enables Shepherd to attack. And then I can still play Cauldron for one mana. Yeah, it seems reasonable. We're slowly filling the graveyard so the cauldron can maybe draw a card. Also have our cancel. Opponent attacks, some fine blocking here. If they have an enchantment they can play this and speed like an omen to kill Dream Devourer, that's fine. We'll still get our Dream Devourer back in the form of a 1-1. All right, banner plus scourge. Probably leave the dream devourer back. And this is going to be a 9-9 nine, nine with one additional power, so a 10-9 for two mana. Valorous Anthem. So this might be a deck playing the uh, Hoplites plus Mystic Reflection combo. But yeah, put on packs it in, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Dream Devourer. Can uh, foretell. Not sure what we want to foretell. Could also just play Varagoth. Cram Session discarding Silver Smote Ghoul to then get it back. Pretty nice. Might have to play Varagoth just to hit our land drops here. 
Although foretelling creatures is also a way to cast a Giruda on the cheap. So I think I will exile Giruda here. Serpent's black red. Alright, land means I can cast Giruda. Could play Shepherd first in case they try and kill Giruda, we get an extra trigger. Which is also reasonable. And then they'll probably end up removing the Shepherd first. Also a bit risky to melt the opponent if they have more ghouls they can get back. Alright, Cloth is pretty effective against our Haunting Voyage plan, although this is a bit of a strange attack. Croxa, make the opponent discard. And then it's also going to trigger Shepherd, so they can do it again here. Alright, pretty cool synergy. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with not the best hand ever, but it's Actually not the worst either. Dream Devourer, good synergy with Castle. We'll be able to empty our hand quickly and then use Castle as our card draw engine. Facing Professor of Symbology out of a Mardu deck, so could be some sort of sacrifice deck. Sciences to get a Swamp. And then we'll get in our two damage. I'm okay trading two for two for plan is to play a demon on turn four. And then what do we search with demon? Probably Giruda plus Haunting Voyage. Apparition Exiles Devourer. Can still cast a demon for four. So that's fine. Also reasonable to play Nightmare Shepherd first, in case something bad happens to the Burning Rune. So Geruda, Haunting Voyage. Opponent gives us the Haunting Voyage, Chiruda hits the Graveyard. Alright, let's see how our opponent deals with our Burning Rune Demon. Five mana. Still not entirely sure what deck our opponent's playing. Opponent foretells their own card. For now, probably play Nightmare Shepherd. See if there's a response. Village Rides sacrificing the Professor to draw to. So they're probably not planning to wipe the board if they didn't sacrifice the Apparition instead. Silencer can name Haunting Voyage, I suppose. 
Name's Voyage. Possible that the Exalt card is a Sternheim Unleashed. Double Banner actually would give us lethal right now. If they don't have any removal spells. Yeah, seems worth a shot. Can also play Dream Devourer afterwards. Attack for 14. Alright, so we got to see our Haunting Voyage demon deck in action. Not always going to be able to pull off the Haunting Voyage, but it is just part of the deck's game plan. Just ramping into big demons can win games by itself. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.